Hi everybody. Welcome to Evian Electronics Tutorials. Um, today I'm just going to do a bit of a brief tutorial on using your digital multimeter to measure various things. Uh, the basics of digital multimeter use basically. Uh, I'm using my Bremen TBMA29 which is a simple yet fairly advanced multimeter capable of quite a bit of uh, things compared to say your fluke or the likes. Um, I'm not going to do AC voltage measurements and the like because I feel it's a bit unnecessary. Um, most of you guys already know that yeah, AC power you can measure them with these meters. Um, I'm not really into the AC thing. The only time I use my meter for measuring AC is when I have a problem or a fault. So let's get past the AC feature of the meter and let's go straight into volts DC. Right, we're in volts DC. I've got a little 9 volt EverReady battery over here instead of the power supply which I'm going to measure. Your red lead to positive, black lead to negative and you can actually measure your battery or power supply or whatever you're measuring. Now as you can see we've got 9.415 volts. Uh, this battery is still pretty good. So I, I think uh, I'm happy with that. We could put a load onto the battery and see how the voltage still holds if you really want to get technical. But this is a basic tutorial on using your multimeter. Right, so battery is good. Put it back in the storage shelves over here. Now let's have a look at something else. You do have options for millivolts, DC, millivolts, AC, etc. Same thing applies, it's just for measuring much smaller voltages. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Resistance. Resistance mode. We are now in our resistance mode and ready to measure. I've got a couple of resistors over here. I'm not sure how the Brayman is going to hold up to measuring low ohm resistors. But let's find out about that. Right, we'd hook our resistor up. Preferably don't touch them because your body resistance does play a part in the actual measurement. This is a 1 ohm. And as you can see, we're registering 0 0.9 ohms as a 5% 1 ohm resistor. So, yep, yeah, that resistor is good. I'm happy with that. Now we have a lower ohm. This is a 0 0.1 ohm. Now, the moment of truth. Let's see how this... Uh, Multimeter handles low ohm resistance. Um, sometimes meters don't like this too much, but um, yeah, pretty much on par with the fluke, but not as accurate. The fluke measures at 0 0.2. Oh, there we go, 0 0.2 ohms. This is 0 0.1 ohm, 5% resistor. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, resistance. You're going to use a lot of when measuring in circuits, like uh, some of the little electronic circuits which we've built. We've got resistors in, power resistors, the small little surface mount ones, and various other bits and bobs. Um, all over you'll find them in electronics. Now, another option on your multimeter is something called continuity test. Uh, continuity test is like that little speaker symbol where it's showing you like a, a shock wave or whatever you'd like to call it. Your continuity test is basically... It's showing you that there's continuity, very low resistance between two points. Um, you can check fuses, wires for broken connections and stuff like that using the continuity test feature. Now, this meter does have temperature, etc. I'm not going to go into measuring temperature uh, because it's not used every day for many people. Uh, instead, I'm going to head right now over to diodes. I have a germanium and a silicon diode over here. I'm going to use the germanium to show you because it is a bit bigger. Uh, let me just get a focus lock on this little fella. You can't really. Okay. Now a diode is basically a little black tube with a grey line on the one side. Now if we're looking at the diode from left to right, the grey line is on the right hand side, this side over here, and the black part is on that side. A diode will only allow power to flow through it in one direction. If you try to put it the other way, it'll block it. It's like a one-way gate. So to test a diode, firstly, the one-way gate, closed. No continuity, no nothing going through. Germanium diode, I'm expecting about 0 0.15, 0 0.2, maybe even 0.3 volts drop. So when we go with a positive onto the ingoing, we can now 
there we go, 0.148 volt drop on the diodes. Okay, this diode is good. Now, a small silicon diode, same thing applies. Let's start with the, the way where it won't allow power to flow. Nothing. Let's turn it around. 0.54, this diode is good, silicon. So as you can see, that is a good way of doing things with the diode test. Now also, where this specific thing works, it works with any PN junction. So when we look at a transistor, like here we have two transistors. You can test them in circuit, but normally it's better to take them out. You'll see two junctions at around 0.6, which is correct. So, so far so good. Now you reverse and you place your negative lead onto your base and you'll have no conductivity or no no flow. Back again, you see, that transistor is good. Let's check the next one. Looking good. Let's just flip it around one more time and check, make sure that the other way it's not conducting. Dead, dead. Okay, so those two transistors are good. So yeah, the diode test is useful for checking transistors. You can also use it for checking MOSFETs, if you know how. Um, it's quite a simple procedure. You have to charge up the MOSFET, and then um, you can check the gate resistance or voltage drop, or whatever the case may be. Now as for current, current works a little bit differently on meters. Um, this meter specifically has got two current jacks, your amps and your million microamps. Um, current is basically, uh, like if you plug into the amps jack, this specific unit is designed to measure 10 amps on the amps jack. Uh, so this will be your sort of 1 to 10 amps measurement or 0 0.5 to 10 amps or whatever the case may be. Your million microamps, on the other hand, are designed for measuring like 0 0.6 amps and below. Um, so if you're measuring a small current or you're expecting to measure a small current, you could go here or alternatively into the amps jack. I would recommend this meter automatically selects, so at the moment it's in milliamps, right? But if you change to the amps jack, it's automatically going to change it to the amps scale. Um, it's just the way this meter is designed. I always recommend you start with the amps jack, and if it's below the 0 0.6 amps or whatever your meter's milliamp jack is, you can jack in here to get a finer resolution of, of what your amp reading is actually doing. This meter has a nice feature whereby if you're on voltage mode and you're trying to measure a voltage through the amps jack, which would create a dead short onto the voltage you're trying to measure, it's going to warn you where you could jack out, jack into the correct jack and measure your voltage, etc. Basically, amps is a very, very, very low resistance inside this meter. Um, think of the meter as a pass-through. So in other words, the current's going to flow into the positive lead and out the negative lead with very little resistance in the meter. So it would in effect create a dead short if you're measuring a voltage. Now the current flow, let's say you're measuring the current flow to this hand. Positive lead would go to your power source, negative lead would go to the positive input of your device that you're trying to measure the current flow to. Negative lead from the device goes straight to the negative lead of the power source. So basically you could connect this into the positive um, rail of the power or into the negative rail, whichever way you want to do it, because whatever current flows in has to flow back out again. So in effect, you could do it either way. Okay, guys, that concludes the very brief tutorial on using a digital multimeter for volts, currents, amp, etc. cetera, like that. Um, uh, capacitance, yeah, let's do a bit of a capacitance measurement before we close up shop. But basically, you would use that to check the microfarad rating of the capacitors. I wouldn't take it too literally. It's not going to tell you if the capacitor is broken or not, quite simply because it can't. Um, but it will give you an indication of the microfarad, millifarad rating of the capacitor. If you really want to measure capacitors, I recommend you get yourself an ESR meter, which is something else I'll discuss at a later stage, as it will be able to tell you specifically if your meter uh, or if your capacitor has a problem or not. Now lastly, before we finish up, I spoke to you guys about duty cycle on oscilloscopes and how I would show you how you can measure duty cycle on your multimeter. It's quite a simple procedure. On this meter here, 
if you have a look, we have a little second function over here with duty percent and frequency. So let's have a look at this. Right. Here we have our frequency. So let's start up this thing. I'm on 1%, but um, let's see. I'm generating a 1% duty cycle. 490 hertz. So 490 hertz measured. Okay, it's showing a 0.4% duty cycle, but let's slowly increase this. Well, I'm not doing 1%, I'm doing 1 out of 255. So, yeah, it's about right, actually, because um, if I wanted to do 25%, I would run it at 64. Let's do that. I'm going to up it to 64 out of 255, which is a quarter, which will be a 25% duty cycle. And there. Whoops, a little bit over. There. That's 64 out of 255 on the PWM generator. 25.1% duty cycle. So uh, this is handy where you can actually see what your duty cycle currently is. Let's increase that to 128, which will be a 50% duty cycle on the pulse width modulation. This is handy just for doing quick measurements. If you know the PWM is there and working, and you just want to see what value it's currently running at, this is the way you would do that. Um, most decent multimeters nowadays, even the cheaper ones, have the facility for checking PWM duty cycle and stuff like that. It's not just PWM, it's basically any uh, frequency um, sine wave or anything like that. There we've got our 50% duty cycle. And so on and so forth. Sorry, the negative lead just clipped off over there. Clip it back on. There we go. Our 50.2%, 50% duty cycle. Guys, that's about all I need to show you for now. You can go up more on the duty cycle if you really want to see um, up to 100%. I'm not going to bother with that too much as it's unnecessary. So power down this. And yeah, that pretty much concludes our basic tutorial on how to use a digital multimeter for electronics purposes. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, have a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Cheers for now.